or digitally. All right, this is my introduction to assignment one. It's our fantasy landscape compositing project. Let me clear the space for the recording. All right, so if we go, this is unit four of the class. We've been introduced to compositing with raster imaging with our line art exercise. We've been introduced to vector shapes with our emoji exercise. Now we're gonna go back to raster imaging, but we're going to try to create a fuller, more creative assignment. And it's a hands-on assignment, which is gonna introduce us to the genre of landscape and setting design. So this is, this is great for anyone who wants a career in concept work for, for movies, for video games, both live action and animation. Anyone interested in creating a setting? It requires course participants to use raster imaging software. So we're going to be manipulating pixels here. So we'll be using PhotoP, but in our lab, we can also use Photoshop interchangeably with this. And we're going to be using that software to layer and alter found images into a landscape composition that's based on an original sketch and compositing plan that I'll show you how to put together in this introduction. What do we want to learn? We want to, through image resourcing, we want to research, reflect on, and respond to the contemporary issues of traditional art disciplines versus digital art disciplines. We did that with our question of the day but we're also gonna do that by making our own original landscape here. We're gonna review the basics of compositing raster files using transforming options and direct adjustments. So just like we did for our first exercise, we're gonna be uh, stretching and scaling and tilting and placing our, our layers, but then we're also gonna, going to do direct adjustments like contrast and color. And then we're gonna be learning some new tools to create seamless composites such as uh, soft erasing for edges and better selections. We're going to affect values, lighting, and color through direct adjustments like levels, color balance, and hue saturation. Those will be the three that we use the most. And then we're going to keep learning how to organize layers and move, move our layers to provide three layers of depth in our landscape because we're looking for each landscape to have a distinguishable foreground, middle ground, and background. Okay. So with that in mind, when we look at past art, remember to do your question of the day on the advantages and disadvantages of digital over traditional. But when we look at past projects of the fantasy landscape, can we see a distinguishable foreground, middle ground, and background? That's how it's going to be most engaging to us as a viewer. Foreground, middle ground, background. Sometimes the background is a really just diffuse skyline, right? And the foreground is often, you know, some elements that are pushed right into the frame coming in from the corner like these dust clouds, and there's a little rough road sign there showing us foreground. Here we have the parts of a rock and a, a cactus that's kind of cut off that shows us immediate foreground. In this example, we have these, these gems and this line of rocks as the immediate foreground. That gives way into a middle ground where our eye can rest and take in a lot of the the details, and then that gives way to a further back background, which is usually softened uh, through atmospheric perspective and more ap layers of atmosphere, like the tower here in the back. And so those are the three layers of depth we're going for. Notice that we're all gonna do sketches to help that happen. Okay, how do we approach this? So, I have directions here. I have some examples. We want to source our images and get the best images we can. So we need at least a thousand pixels in the smallest dimension. So we can find that through image sources 
by selecting either large images under tools for Google Image or using the largest possible raster options from Pixabay. Pixabay is my preferred option because that's all Creative Commons, and we'll get into that. And for instance, you can find NASA images on Pixabay because all NASA images, because they're paid for with taxpayer money, are in the public domain. Even this digital landscape recreation that was created by NASA. And they're all going to be nice resolutions. So once we find uh, five reference images, at least five, then we're going to start piecing them together. But in order to find our references, we need to have an idea of what we want to create. So a fantasy landscape just means that it doesn't exist in reality. You know, it's something from, the, from our dreams. And a landscape can be any sort of environment. It can be natural, it can be urban, it can be set in the past or the future, it can be alien or familiar, right? What I do need from you is that these landscapes need to be absent of life, right? Um, well, more specifically, they need to be absent of figurative content. So no people, no animals, no working vehicles. So this is anything that we would expect to be moving. Instead, we're kind of creating postcard images that are settings that we can later put figurative content into. But we can have broken down vehicles. We can have corpses, if we wanted, or bones of animals. And of course, we can have lots of, of plant life and foliage. Because even though that does move, it doesn't move perceptible to the human eye in the way that animals and people do. Because we're using large reference, we want our final image to be able to be printed at no less than 300 pixels per inch at no smaller than 8 by 10 inches. And if we do a good job with our resolution, we can be able to print up to 13 by 19 inches. And if you do extremely high resolution images, we could even print up to 16 by 20 once we get back into the lab. Though it will take a program like Photoshop to support files that large. But the great thing about PhotoP is we can work between PhotoP and Photoshop in the lab. So how do we get inspiration for our landscapes? Well, I take a lot of inspiration from, from the artists that do this professionally, right? Whether they're creating uh, composite backgrounds as concept artist. So if I do a Google search for cons composite concept landscapes, video games, you'll see lots of video tutorials about how they do it or just of collections of them. And you'll see lots of examples, right? So if you're a video game fan or if you like fantasy and sci-fi movies, digital artists create the visions of these things. Whether they're set in some alien future like this, whether they're sent in some uh, ancient past like this. This is from, it looks like Assassin's Creed set in Florence. If you take the people out, that's the, the fantasy landscape, the setting design. Whether it has a lot of greenery or whether it's devoid and it's all in ruins, whether it has man-made structures or not or whether it's just pretty, right? All of this is created digitally. And we're going to learn how. So you can get inspiration from that. Notice that they almost always have foreground, middle ground, background. Foreground, middle ground, background. On and on and on. But we're taking figures out of it. But I also like to look to other art forms that maybe weren't always done digitally, though they are now. And I'm talking about animation. And especially like old Looney Tunes animation. All of these are, are background paintings from, from Looney Tunes cartoons. And you'll notice that some of them focus on foreground elements. Some of them focus more on the middle ground, like the beanstalk here. 
like the, the nice lit uh, stream here. And some focus more on the background, something in the distance. We want our original landscapes to be similarly engaging. So how can we approach this? You need to decide what your setting is and what kind of elements you're going to start looking for. So how can we do that? Well, let's open up a folder. And I'm going to create a new folder within my class folder, which is assignment. All right, so you can see my new folder here. This is what I'm working on. And within this, I want to start brainstorming. And you can do this in your physical sketchbook as well. I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop to make a digital sketchbook. And I'm going to use my drawing tablet So I'm going to open a file that's 8 by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch. And just so it imitates a sketchbook or a piece of random sketch paper and a pencil, I'm going to plug in my, my drawing tablet. Just to remind you, I'm going to turn on my FaceTime really quick so you can see what this drawing tablet looks like. Hopefully I'm not overloading my computer right now. So that's the brand. It's reversed, but it's W-A-C-O-M. This is a corded tablet. I like to use small ones. This is what we'll have in the lab when you come to class. You just take the stylus out and we draw on it and it's pressure sensitive and it matches up to the proportions of the screen. All right. So I can use this though. You can are welcome to sketch digitally, but you're also just as welcome to sketch independently. I'm going to make some notes. So my fantasy landscape. What kind of setting do I want? Any ideas? I'll take your ideas. Do I want it to be icy? Do I want it to be rocky? Do I want it to be foresty? You can chime in with your input. I'm thinking icy is always fun. Uh, let's think about like cliffs. What's the time period? Should this be middle of the day, early morning, late at night? It could be middle of the night. I will think. morning light maybe so we might have a sun low in the sky that will reflect off some of the ice what do i want besides icy cliffs i probably want some uh maybe mix the icy cliffs with some some snow melt maybe some boulders. So I'm giving myself ideas for what to search for. What kind of sky do I want? Do I want it to be stormy or do I want it to be clear? Let's go for hazy sky. 
And do I want it to be alien or do I want it to be our planet? And I'm going to go for 